Hi everyone, I'm Hector Garcia, CPA and QuickBooks consultant, and you're here watching this video because you have QuickBooks desktop and you want to move to QuickBooks online. Maybe you are not sure if you want to move to QuickBooks online, maybe you want to just give it a shot. This video is good for you, whether you have decided to move or if you just want to test it out to see what it looks like. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go set up a free trial. I'm going to put a link in the description to how you can set up a free trial. Uh, and, and also with my link, you get a little bit of better price that it, versus going to quickbooks.com directly. This is still the QuickBooks website. Look into it. Uh, com. It's just a special partner site that gives you a little bit better discount. Me as a reseller, as one of the most biggest resellers in the world of QuickBooks, you know, we get a little bit better price than um, that you can get if you went to the website directly. Anyway, you can have four options, simple start, essentials, plus, or advanced. Most QuickBooks Enterprise users, I would say probably 99% of QuickBooks Enterprise users, if you have QuickBooks Desktop Enterprise now, you're going to go straight to QuickBooks Online Advanced because you're used to having the best version of QuickBooks Desktop, so you're probably going to want to use the best version of QuickBooks um, Online. Uh, QuickBooks Online Advanced gives you up to 25 users, and it gives you a little bit of a customization in user permissions, kind of similar to the way QuickBooks Desktop Enterprise gave, gave you some, some ways to restrict what certain users can see. Now, most QuickBooks Desktop Pro and um, Premier users are going to be between Essentials and Plus. I'm going to tell you um, inequivocally, don't use Simple Start. Um, it has limited reports. It has it doesn't have um, accounts payable. Now, if you have to, if, if your business is super tiny and you want to get started with Sim Simple Start, that's fine. It's just the stuff that is missing is a little bit frustrating for me. So really, I would I would urge you to look between essentials and plus and most of you will be looking uh, at those two and i'll do an entirely different video i'll put it in the description where i go feature by feature and explain what that is because that in itself could take 30 minutes by itself so you're going to pick the one that best works for you the good thing is you can always downgrade or upgrade so you should not feel guilty about starting straight from advanced and downgrading later on that's probably the best bet anyway um, but a lot of people are, are going to be like we say the vast majority of people I work with use plus so you can pick the one that works for you and you're going to click on try it for free and you're going to create uh, your account now when you put your email address so you're going to go ahead and create your account and you're going to put um, an email address it's possible that the email address you put is already associated with another intuit login if you have quickbooks desktop and you have to create an intuit login to get your quickbooks desktop file connected to um intuit for whatever reason, anyway, you're already going to have an Intuit ID. It doesn't mean you have a QuickBooks online account already set up. It just means you already have a mechanism to log in into your Intuit account world. So if that's going to be the case, you're going to click on sign in and you're going to use that user ID and password. That way you don't have to create a new one. And if you forgot the password, just click on recover account and go through the motions of doing that. If you don't have an Intuit ID or, or you don't know your Intuit ID, just put whatever your email address is. It won't give you um, an error the way it did uh, for me. And just put your password and click sign up with email and it should take you to the next screen. If it asks you for a verification code that you got sent either via a text message or an email, you're gonna go ahead and input it there and click on continue and follow through with the, with the login process. Okay, so once that's done, we're logged in, we're setting up a free trial. Now there's a couple important things. Now I'm not gonna walk you through every single screen in the setup process. I'm going to sort of let you uh, self-manage that. I'm just going to point out the ones that matter uh, on what you're going to put in there. So we're going to click on next and your company name. This is the single most important thing. So let's put here Hector's uh, Pet Shop, whatever the business name is. And that's the name that you're going to identify when you convert from desktop to online because you may have multiple company names in there. So make sure that you use um, a unique name. You could put a period or an exclamation mark or something like that if you want to. You want it to stand out even more. Long story short, you know, don't mess with that. But if you do run into a situation where you see multiple company names that are the exact same, you could essentially potentially get confused on which one you're gonna pick. So just you know, do the best of your abilities to pick one that uh, you will be able to identify easily when you log in uh, in QuickBooks Desktop. I'm putting my real business name in this particular case. Now, to speed up this process, I'm kind of gonna try to ignore most of these things. So I'm gonna answer some of these correctly and some of the other ones I'm gonna try to uh, skip through. So I'm just gonna put 
uh, answer correctly. Um, and then just go next, 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 and go to the next screen. So I'm just going to keep clicking, and then I'll let you know the ones that matter. Okay, first big question is, get started with uh, getting paid with invoices. This is to create a merchant account with Intuit, with QuickBooks, so you can have a buy now or a, a pay now button in the electronic invoices you send to your customers. This feature is absolutely amazing. It will save you so much time. It is, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a game changer. It's the reason why you're moving to QuickBooks um, online in the first place. So if you are gonna set this up, um, don't set it up yet, set it up afterwards, just because when you do the conversion from desktop, you're gonna have to, have to start all over anyway. So don't do, the, don't do this yet. And also, if you want a little bit of a better rate, it's like 0.1%, it's not really that much, but a little bit better rate than what Intuit offers, us as resellers, we can also set up merchant accounts for our um, QuickBooks Online clients and give them a slightly better rate. So just send me an email. I'll put the email down here somewhere and say, hey, I want to set up a payments account and I'll connect you with my direct um, QuickBooks Online payments person. So I'm going to skip that for now and then, and then keep going with the rest of the questions. If it asks you to connect your bank accounts, you want to skip that too. You want to do that later. Because again, when we do the conversion, we have to start all over again anyway. So it's completely pointless for you to uh, connect your bank accounts at this point. I don't even know why. If I told QuickBooks I'm converting from desktop to online, why is it even asking me to do that? So you are going to do that. That's going to be amazing when you download the transactions from the bank and automate some of that data entry. But we're going to skip it for now. And again, I'll put links um, down in the description on how to do all these things, how to you know, learn how to use QuickBooks and connect your banks and all that stuff. So I'm gonna keep skipping and try to get to the last page so I can see the last uh, comment here. So once you're on the last page, it should say let go and it should send you to QuickBooks Online. This is gonna be a blank screen. You're not gonna see any information. Nothing has been converted yet. What we did is we created the account. Uh, the account currently, it's on the free trial. If I'm gonna X out of that, then I'm gonna click on the gear menu and click on account and settings. And then under account and settings, you're going to see a uh, billing. It should be a billing and subscription. We're going to click on that. And then under billing and subscription, you will know exactly what version of QuickBooks Online you have. Here's your company um, ID, which you will need for customer service purposes. Uh, this is where you can downgrade or upgrade your, your plan, where you can cancel your trial, and it will tell you the price and the promo that is set up at uh, the moment. When, once you have converted the, inf uh, the information from desktop and you love QuickBooks Online and you're ready to stay, you come back here and click on subscribe to make sure you don't have any service interruption. So this is a completely blank file. And now we're gonna swap over, we're gonna switch over to QuickBooks Desktop and walk you through the process of actually getting all the data migrated into this account. So let's go to that. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna click on help and then update to make sure that you are in the latest version of QuickBooks. And click on update now and get updates. And you have to wait until it finishes the entire updating process. So when it says update complete and nothing new to download, that means you are in the latest version. So the next step is we're gonna hit control one on the keyboard. That's gonna take us to the product information page. If you want to know which is your uh, latest version, you can see right there up in the top. And the really important thing you want to look at is total number of targets. So in this file, it's 5,937. This is actually not a really big deal. But when your number of targets is over 750,000, you might not be able to convert that QuickBooks file. So you're going to have to do a condense, which is a topic for a whole other video. So anyway, let's assume that we are all set with uh, checking the targets. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit Control B Q then nothing's gonna happen, you're gonna hit okay. And then a pop-up is gonna show up, which is your data conversion pop-up. This is your migration pop-up. You're gonna follow the instructions of this pop-up the exact same way that I'm showing you here. So the next thing is we're gonna click here, it says get started. Okay, don't click see that on a 30-day free trial because you should have created an account prior. You should always have created an account prior to using this tool because the problem is if you use this tool, it's going to create an advanced account and it could complicate things. You create your account first, the way I told you at the very beginning, and you're going to click on get started. 
Okay. Next step, you have to choose whether you want to export all company data. That's your standard migration path, by the way. So if you want to bring all your transactions, you want to click on that one, or you can click export specific data and you're going to have list only. It's basically going to send your customer list, your vendor list, employees and chart of accounts, no numbers, no balances. And then you also have all lists and balances, which is a little bit of a challenge because if you do that, it's also going to include a journal entry that's going to bring you all the balances as of today. You can't choose or last year's balances or last month's balances. You just get whatever the balances are as of today. And that may or may not be something you want to do. So I'm not 100% sure how this one could be useful. We're going to use a standard migration process, which is export all data. Then I'm going to hit continue. If there's inventory on your file, it's going to ask you whether you want to track inventory as FIFO, or you can click no for don't move inventory. My recommendation is if you do have inventory, click yes for FIFO. And then for starting date, pick at some point at the beginning of the current tax year. So don't mess with last year's tax return because switching from average cost to FIFO might have some tax implications. So don't pick something for the previous year as you don't want to mess with last year's tax returns. You're going to pick something like January 1st, 2023. If you don't have inventory, just click on don't move the inventory and then click on continue. Then if you signed in into your QuickBooks account up here at the top, it will tell you which QuickBooks account your QuickBooks desktop file happens to be logged into, which might not be the same um, Intuit sign in that you set up for the QuickBooks online account. So if it's not the correct one, you're going to click here, sign in to another account. So you, think you can then search for your QuickBooks online account because you want to make sure that you don't mess these things up. But let's say you're logged into the right Intuit account and then you have a list of QuickBooks online files that you've created. A lot of people do to create a new company, but as I recommended you at the very beginning, don't do that. Select the company you, you've already created on your own terms with your own pricing, with the own ver your, the version that you wanted, et cetera, et cetera. You always want to create that QBO blank file first and then do the conversion after. So then we're going to hit continue. And then it gives you a quick summary. Again, it gives you a prompt again to want you to create a new company. You're not going to do that. You're going to make sure that this is the correct company file that I just created in QuickBooks Online separately. And then we're going to click on export. It's going to say, we, we will email you as soon as the account is ready. So just wait for that. If it tells you to download a desktop file, I personally don't, don't recommend using the QuickBooks Online desktop app. I think it's a little bit um, just messy for the time being. So just don't install another app into your computer. You're just going to use the browser. So at this point, you can just exit out of the screen and then we can wait for that email and then log back into QuickBooks Online. So as soon as you get the email that says congratulations, your data is now available to, um, or your data in QuickBooks Online, you can click on complete setup and it will take you through the login process to log into your QuickBooks Online account that you have created. Once you're logged in, you're going to be able to now check your data that came into QuickBooks Online versus the one QuickBooks desktop. So I'm going to click on business overview and then I'm going to go down to profit and loss. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to check my profit and loss for all dates. So change it to all dates and click on run reports. Let me close this up. Then I'm going to scroll all the way down and look at the net income. So that's 156,840.66. That's not always going to match. We're going to open up QuickBooks Desktop and check the same thing. So we're going to do the profit and loss standard, and we're going to pick all dates, and then we're going to go down and look at the number. So the number is pretty close, not exact. This stuff happens during the conversion. Sometimes your inventory uh, numbers can affect the net numbers. You can go in a little bit deeper and try to figure out what year the issue happens. So you can break this down by year, all dates, years, run report. Then we can scroll down and we can see the net income for each report. I mean, for each year. And then I can go back into QuickBooks Desktop, do the same thing. We're going to uh, do total by year. And then we can start comparing, in this case, the net income for each year. And then go back and check and see where the difference is. And then based on when the difference is, you can make your decision how you can adjust it. Normally, you're going to need probably your accountant, your tax person, at least to make sure that your um, QuickBooks ties to your tax return. Um, I don't want to get into the details as to why something doesn't convert perfect. But if it's within a small margin of error, you can make a journal entry 
to um, to adjust that. Again, you might need a sort of an advanced QuickBooks user to help you um, iron out the details about the differences. For most people, small differences are not a big deal. They're ready to move forward and ready to love their QuickBooks online once they do their conversion from desktop. Okay, so make sure you go down in the description and check out all the links that I'm going to put in there. I'm going to put links, number one, to the sign-up page I showed you at the very beginning. So you can sign up for the new QuickBooks Online account, choose the right version, and get the discount I mentioned earlier. And I'm also going to put links to the next videos you should watch. So an in-depth tutorial on how to use QuickBooks Online from A through Z, in-depth tutorial how to connect your banks and classify all those transactions that get downloaded automatically, and any other sort of more advanced video that I will create afterwards. Also, when I have uh, classes available, I'll put links to that as well. Some people like to take live classes with me or some of our recorded comprehensive courses. I'll put links to all that. Anyway, hope you like this video and I'll see you on the next one.